Hi, my name is Carlin Smith. I'm with Robotronics, and today we're going to be showing you how to operate and set up your KC robot. Hey, KC. How's hey, it going? Carlin, how are you? Awesome. Let's show them how you operate. Okay, KC? Okay, that sounds great. first battery is the main vehicle battery and we're going to use this charger right here and the black is going to connect to the negative terminal and the red is going to connect to the positive terminal. Those colors will match up with the cables that come off of the battery and the charger when it's charging um, this light here is going to turn on yellow saying that it's charging. When it's completely charged, it will turn green and that will let you know that this battery is done charging. Okay, for charging the RC batteries, uh, we're going to use this style of charger right there. And when we plug it in, the LED will turn on here. Uh, there is no indication when the battery is fully charged, but the charging takes between four to eight hours and don't leave it on the charger for more than 14 hours. So we can directly connect the battery to the charger that way. The other way we can charge the battery is switch to using this barrel style connector adapter and then we can plug it into the RC while the battery is in the RC. Some tips for taking care of your robot is when you're done using your robot, make sure that you take the battery out of the robot and charge it, the main vehicle battery, and also that you charge the battery on your RC. If you're not going to use the robot for an extended period of time, such as more than a month, then every month you're going to need to recharge the battery, the vehicle battery in the robot. When you're storing your robot, make sure that it's in a controlled environment as far as the temperature goes so that it's, the temperature is not below 40 degrees and it's not above 80 degrees. And if you can cover up your robot, that will also help it keep it looking nice. For powering the voice systems, we have the, the two different voice systems, the UHF unit and the VHF. The UHF is for your hearing. They both take 9 volt batteries to uh, get to the battery on the UHF unit. You press down here and then push that forward and it's just a 9 volt battery that goes in here. Uh, when you turn this on, when you first turn it on you'll see this LED will turn on showing you that you've got power but that LED will stay off until the battery goes low so this LED becomes a low indicator when you're operating it and that light comes on then you'll know that it's time to replace the battery. For powering the VHF unit, it takes a 9 volt battery, the compartment is on the back, we press down there, slide this out, we have the ribbon behind it to make it easier to take it back out and it just presses in there. Like that. slide the door back in place. When we turn it on, just like the UHF unit, when we turn it on, this red light will flash for a second, and then after that, the light should stay off until the battery starts to get low, and then that red light will come back on, and that's a low battery indicator. For installing the battery into the robot, there is, we have these straps on the inside that are gonna help secure the battery to keep it from sliding around. There's a little Velcro patch right there and on the strap, so this helps hold the strap out of the way. And then I'll we'll drop the battery down in there and secure the battery with this clip. Like that. And then the battery will plug in right here. Let's make sure that, that it's off before we plug it in. And then do black to black and red to red. Like that. And then it'll be ready to turn on. When you 
receive your robot in the RC control case, you'll find the following items. We have the RC, we have a strap that we can attach to the carrying case if you want to carry the case with a strap. We have the headset which includes the earpiece and the microphone. And then there is also the LCD interface. This is for making changes in the settings on the robot. We have the keys for the locks on the carrying case. We have the UHF unit. This is for the speaking from the operator to the robot. And then we have the VHF unit, which is the hearing from the robot to the operator. Also, we have some adapter cables for charging the RC battery, an extra RC battery, and then there's also the charger for the battery, for the RC battery. It's important to notice the orientation of the RC in the carrying case. When you put it in, you want to make sure the bottom of the RC goes against this surface here so that when we put it in and we close the lid and pick it up then it's going to be resting on the bottom of the RC rather than resting on the antenna. So this is the LCD interface and we can use it to change a few different functions on the robot. And you don't need connected to the robot for most of the time that you're operating the robot, just only when you're going to make some changes. So to plug it in, you kind of look for where these pins are and make sure they're going to line up with those pins. Push it down and then twist it on until it's tight. And then after it's plugged in, we turn it on. And when it first turns on, this is the version of the code that's in the robot. If we press select, it will go into the menu, and we can do the up, down button to go through the different things that we can change. We have the random modes, whether we can turn on whether the eyes are blinking or not, and some other random features. And then there's also setting the drive. This has to do with if the robot is turning slightly one direction or the other, then we can make some adjustments to that. 95% of the time, you won't ever have to do anything with that. We've already taken care of it at Robotronics. And here we have the drive limit switch, which can change how the controls on the RC work. You'll need to refer to the manual to understand that better. And then we have flashing eyes. This is not applicable to all the robots. Uh, the robots that have eyes that are lit up is where this affects. With the flashing eyes on, when you speak, the eyes will flash. Uh, some people like that feature and some people don't like the eyes flashing. So here's where you can turn that feature on and off. And that's all of the features of the LCD interface. Once you're done making your settings, turn it off, turn the robot off first, and then disconnect by turning it the other way and pulling it back off. So the next component is the amplifier. Uh, right now we're using an amplifier called Road Rage. The audio going into it is plugged in on this side. It's the red and the black one. If we need to make some adjustments to the volume, there's a knob right here that we can turn it up and down. Uh, typically, we normally have the volume between half to three quarters for the best volume and quality that you can get out of it. And this switch here, you want to leave that alone, but it should be set in the middle part. So the 151 transmitter, which is the voice from the robot, back to the person is powered off of this cable here that runs down there and the unit is velcroed underneath there 
and it has a power switch that you're just going to want to leave on all the time right there. And then the microphone plugs into here and runs up underneath and is comes out right there. So there's the microphone for you to hear. So the next component is the MP3 player. There's two different styles of MP3 players that we've been using. One is a round board and one is a rectangle board, but they both go in this spot right here. And they both have the SD card for the MP3 player is right here. So if you need to take it out to change songs or anything like that, that's where it's going to be. And our next component that's worth noting is this is the main processor board. It's the mega board. There's a blinking LED on there and when we turn on the RC that LED will blink faster when it is receiving a good signal. And when I turn it off then that LED will blink slower. located under each of his arms back here and you just push that until it clicks and there's one over here like that. When you go to take it back off, sometimes that pin is hard to get a hold of with one hand. So sometimes I like to use two fingers and I push my fingers on both sides of the pin and I squeeze it together and then that makes it easier to pull the pin back out. Now to connect the electronics of the top to the electronics of the bottom, we're going to open this up here and under here. These pins are going to be towards the front, so I twist it that way and there's a 16 pin connector. So I push that down and then rotate that ring and that will lock it in place. Now the top is. The controls for the robot are as follows. This right stick is for driving the robot, pushing it forward as the robot go forward, full speed, backwards, the robot backs up. This will turn the robot to the right and this will turn the robot to the left. This stick for the KC is for controlling the head and, and the eyes. So right and left will turn the head right and left and will also turn the eyes right and left. When the stick is slightly farther up, now the head is not going to turn right and left, but the eyes will turn right and left. And if we go all the way up and to the right or all the way up and all the way up to the right or all the way up to the left, then that will blink the respective eye, either the right eye or the left eye. If you want to blink both eyes or close both eyes, then bring the stick all the way down and that will close both eyes. These switches right here have a number of different functions. Up will be the beacon light on your robot. Down will be the headlight. And these toggle, so you just press it once and that will turn the beacon light on. And then if you press it again, then that's going to turn it back off. And the same is true with the headlights on there. This switch here is for robots that have an extra set of flashing lights and those are also toggle ones where you press it once and it will activate the function then you press it again and it will deactivate the function. This switch over here 
will be a momentary switch, which if you have a water squirter option, if you hold it down, then the water squirter will activate for as long as you have it held down, and when you let go, then it will stop. Over here, we have a siren momentary one, where as long as you're holding it down, the siren will be going, and then when you let go, it will let off. Controlling the functions of the MP3 player, we're going to hold this switch down and then use these four switches. This switch over here is going to be your pause, play, and stop one. So if there, it's not playing, currently you can press that up and the MP3 player will start playing. If you press it again up, that will pause it. If you press it down, that will stop it and then the next time you press play, it will start playing from the beginning. This one is your forward and backwards track button, or switch. So if I press forward, it's gonna play the, the next song in that direction, or if I press down, it will go backwards to the previous song. And you can press that multiple times to skip through to the song that you want. Over here, we have two switches that each have two directions, up and down, and these are your sound effects switches, and there'll be a dedicated sound effect associated with each position. So I press it up, and it's going to play that sound effect, and push it down, and play a different one, and then that's the same for this switch over here. And the last function of the MP3 player is that this is going to be your volume control for the audio of the MP3 player. Over here is the volume control for your voice, for how loud you, when you're speaking, how loud you are. Now one feature of this is if you turn it all the way down, it will completely mute your voice and the mouth of KC will, KC or whatever robot you're operating, will not move at all. Hey, how's it going, folks? My name's KC. I want to be your new K9 unit.